Our next guest made Homer Simpson eat blowfish. She made Sabrina the teenage witch turn a cheerleader into a pineapple. She spit words in President Barack Obama's mouth and Alyssa Milano's and Candace Bergen's, Bob Newhart's, Conan O'Brien's, David Letterman's. The list goes on and on. Uh, you know her work even if you didn't always know her name, which, by the way, is Nell Scovell. And after decades of feeding her funniest lines to others, she is now feeding hungry readers with a new book. Just the Funny Parts takes you into the writers' rooms throughout the entertainment world. Nell is joining us this morning from New York. So great to talk to you and have you with us on your morning. Oh, my pleasure. You know, I've been working in Hollywood for 30 years, which means I've spent a lot of time in Canada. Oh, fantastic. Well, I'd love to know what you think of our fair country. Oh, I love both coasts. I shot two movies that I wrote and directed in Vancouver and then worked on a show, Warehouse 13, for three years, and we shot that in Toronto. Now, tell me about this transition of going from writing, you know, some of the most iconic lines and scenes for other people, from presidents to actors and other celebrities. What's it like now writing for yourself? Well, it's strange, um, and I worried that the Nell character wasn't likable enough. I mean, one of the big differences is when you create a TV character, you look for consistency. You know, Homer Simpson is always stupid. Um, but in our real lives, we're not always consistent, and sometimes we're very brave, and sometimes we back off. So it, it was tough finding that, that point where... Um, you know, people were on my side. <laughs> um. It is such great insights. And really, you've worked on some of the shows that are near and dear to my heart and so many others, including Saturday Night Live. And you got advice from a female SNL writer, and her advice was, run for your life. Right. I didn't work on SNL. I worked on Letterman, so I did get to work in 30 Rock. And yes, early on, I, I met um, one of the original SNL writers, and... She, uh, she advised me not to go into television, um, and it wasn't easy, but I'm glad I stuck with it. How have you seen that industry, how have you seen the writer's room change over the decades that you've worked there, from being, you know, the only one, the only one there to now where, you know, you see women not only writing in the writer's room, but sometimes headlining their own comedy shows, like Samantha Bee, for example. Have things changed? Well, I love Sam B. so much. Um, I don't know. I haven't seen that s sustained statistical data that convinces me it's changed. You know, in 1990, I went to the Emmys for the first time, and of the five best comedies nominated, three and a half were created by women. So sometimes I look at it and think we've taken a step back. Uh, you write in your book uh, about writing for President Barack Obama for the White House Correspondents' Dinner. Talk about a tough crowd. Like, you have to nail it. You have to be funny if you're going to do that. Uh, you say writing for the president was a highlight and one that you owed a SpongeBob SquarePants? How did that happen? <laughs> well, it all started with a joke I wrote when the president was visiting Facebook, and I did some writing for... Uh, the executives there. And the joke was just kind of this throwaway where they were saying that they were so glad that the president was on Facebook, and if he had half a million more followers, he'd be tied with SpongeBob SquarePants. Um, <laughs> and they, uh, they showed this joke to John Favreau, who was the president's head writer, and he um, thought it would be funny coming out of the president's mouth, because, <laughs> you know, Obama was so wonderfully self-deprecating. Um, and then they asked me to contribute jokes to the White House Correspondents' Dinner, which I did for five years. I thought I would read one joke that actually didn't make it, but that I thought your, um, your viewers would like. Can I, can I just do that quickly? Sure. Um, oh, good. I know many of you came tonight to see the charismatic leader of North America, but Justin Trudeau couldn't make it. <laughs> A little shout out to Canada. We always love that. A little shout out. You, uh, in, in an almost serious tone, that you write about landing your dream job in the 1990s, writing for David Letterman, and then you had to yeah. leave that dream job. What happened behind the scenes? So that was, um, look, in 2009, David Letterman himself goes on air and admits that he's had sex with women he works with. 
and, and, you know, that was a surprise to no one who ever worked there. So I decided to step out and comment not just on the, um, the atmosphere of sexual harassment and sexual favoritism that permeated that office, but then I pivoted to talk about how few women were in the writer's room. Um, and uh, there were zero at the time, and I thought that was just inconceivable. I mean, you literally can't do worse, mm -hmm. right? Uh, no, there's so many things I want to get to because your book is so chock full of great stories and insights. Readers are going to have to find that out for themselves. It's all the time we have this morning. Good to talk to you. Oh, that was fast. Thank you. <laughs>